Oh hey, good morning. Welcome back to Cambridge. Today we're doing a bit of maintenance on the fence mounted solar panels, but there's something else I'd like to talk to you about today. A few months ago I did a video on my north facing solar array and how as we get into the lighter days and the, the days get longer, how much extra energy they produce. Well today I want to show you the evidence behind that. So a couple of days ago when we had an absolutely glorious day, I took a recording of the panels throughout an entire day. I want to show you how well those panels produced. So as you can see, our array is broken up into three parts. We have four 435 watt panels on our south by southeast facing garage roof. We have 10 440 watt panels on our south by southwest facing rear roof. And on the front of our house, we have eight 435 watt panels on a north by northeast facing roof. So I've come back into the office because I want to show you my evidence of why I think north facing panels are absolutely something you should be considering if you're thinking about installing or upgrading an existing solar array. Now, the common wisdom amongst solar installers here in the UK is that north facing panels are just not worth it. You're just spending money, you'll never get your money back, that you're wasting your time. I don't believe that for a moment. Now, we don't think of the UK as generally a north country. We're not, we're not that far north or that far south, we're kind of in the middle. But to be honest, if you think about where the UK sits geographically, we're roughly on the same latitude as the Hudson Bay in Canada. You know that big bay that's in the middle of Canada where the polar bears live? Yeah, that's the same latitude as the UK. Consequently, because of that northern latitude, we get very early sunny mornings in the summer. The sun rises outside my bedroom window at about 4.30 a.m. in the height of summer. And that means having solar panels on the north side of your house will start your generation day so much earlier than if you wait for the sun to rise in the east and track round to the, the point where it's overhead of your south facing solar array. This can add as much as five extra hours of generation to your solar array. And consequently, five more hours of generation means more money in your pocket. So you saw from the drone footage, we have our array broken up into three parts. We have our north facing array, we have our south by southwest array and a south by southeast array. This means that we capture as much of the sun as we can going around. Now, if you've got a nice big wide south facing roof, then obviously fill that first. Put all of your panels, cover as much of that south facing roof as you can. But then look at your north facing aspects. How can you extend that day? How can you extend the generation day to give you those four or five extra hours in the summer? Now, when you look at our roof, you'll see we don't really have any major shading issues. Um, on the front of the house, there is a, a very tiny little bit of shading that happens on a couple of the panels as the sun starts to move round to the south. But to compensate for that, all of our panels on our roof have solar edge optimizers fitted to them. This means that if one panel starts to drop a little bit in performance, it doesn't affect the rest of the array. Now, what I'm going to show you now is a recording that I took from the Solar Edge app um, actually two days ago when we had a really nice sunny day where it was sunny from dawn till dusk. And I want to show you what happens as the sun rises. You'll be able to see each individual panel when they come to life. What you can see here are all three aspects of my solar system. And for those that can't figure out the orientation, the panels on the right hand side of the diagram, that is my north facing array. The 10 panel block is my south by southwest facing array and the four on their own are the four that live on the garage roof facing south by southeast. So the block in the middle there is the inverter. You'll see that number change as it goes up. That's how much power it's supplying. That's not really relevant to what we're gonna show you here. Now at the top, you can see a timeline. And this shows you from the beginning to the end of the day, um, how much power is being generated, not in total, but at individual points during the day. So we can actually run through the day. We can play the day forwards and backwards and we can see how each of the individual panels is doing. Now, this is a movie file. So what I can actually do is just drag it forward until we get to the point where the panels start to generate. So if I go to about here, you'll start to see the numbers change from zero to very small numbers. Now we're at about six o'clock in the morning. 
Now, just to put this in, we are in mid-March, so we're still three months away from Midsummer's Day. So this is just going to get better and better and better as we go towards the 21st of June. But at 6.30 in the morning right now, in the middle of March, my panels are about to come to life. And if I just scrub forward a little bit more, let's go forward till about 7.30 in the morning, you'll notice the panels on the front of the house are generating about 40 watts each. Now, not a huge amount, but multiply that by eight panels and you start to get a reasonable amount of power. You can see the panels on the back of the house are just ticking along. This is just ambient light that's hitting them right now at about 12 watts. And again, on the garage roof. Now you'll notice the sun is in this picture is tracking from the right hand side of the diagram around the bottom of the diagram and going round to the left hand side of the diagram. So this panel, number 3.1.1, is going to come alive first. And you'll actually see that in a moment as I track forward as the panels on the front of the house really start to come to life. So we're only at 8 o'clock in the morning now and these panels are generating about 160 watts each. The panels on the back of the roof are still basically asleep, just some ambient light. But note the panel here. So this is showing the movement of the sun. As the sun's starting to track round, you're starting to see these panels on the north side of the house are producing, and so is this one out on the extreme here. So let's track forward another couple of hours. Let's head forward to nine o'clock. So the panels on the front now are up to about 170 watts. These panels are still only sitting at about 60 or 70 watts of ambient light, and we're starting to see the sun is now getting round to the point where 3.14 is the one that will start to pick up the light the last as the sun reaches the south. If I track forward a little bit further, and we're into mid-morning now at 11 o'clock. So 11 o'clock, the panels on the back of the house have woken up now. So we're starting to get about 230 watts out of our south-facing array. Um, over on the garage roof, we're up to about 300 watts. But look at the front of the house. They're still producing. So as we track forward for the whole day, you'll notice that the panels on the back, the south facing panels by midday, they're all alive, they're all producing power, but so are those panels on the front. Now, they're gonna to start to slacken off. We start to see there at about 12 o'clock, 12, 15, they're about 120 watts, they start to drop off as we go through. The, and this is because the sun has now moved into the, well, past the southern point of, of the horizon, it is now in the southwest part of the sky. And as we track forward the rest of the day, you'll see the panels on the front of the house go to sleep as everything else sort of tracks down at the end of the day. So here's where we ended up at the end of the day. You can see that the 10 panel array on the South by Southwest facing roof, um, they generated about two kilowatt hours per panel. So roughly about 20 kilowatts. The panels on the South by Southeast facing roof on top of the garage, they generated again about two kilowatts each. But the panels on the north by northeast facing, they generated approximately 50%. So about 1.05 kilowatts per panel or an extra eight kilowatt hours during the day. But again, this is only in March. As we go through towards the middle of summer and then from the middle of summer back to around about mid-September, these panels on the northeast facing side of the roof are gonna continue to extend that generation day from the early hours of the morning all the way through to the end of the day. And by the time we get into mid-June, we could be seeing generation days that run from 5 a.m. in the morning all the way through to 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. So this is why I say north-facing panels should be something you absolutely should consider when you're designing or upgrading your solar array. They can add significantly to what your array is gonna generate. Now, the caveat on this, as, as all things, nothing, nothing comes for free. During the winter months, they're not gonna do a great deal at all. They will pick up some ambient light, but certainly in my case, the sun rises in the winter behind the houses that in, are in that general direction, and it doesn't appear sort of above the horizon until 9, 30, 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's usually when my south by southeast and south by southwest facing arrays will pick it up. So for the winter months, north facing panels, not so great, but certainly during the summer and especially in the northern latitudes, we get a great deal of benefit from having those extra panels on the north side of the house. With that, I'm going to sign off. I hope this has been useful. I hope if you are considering getting a solar system installed or you're upgrading your existing system, I hope you will consider north facing panels because I think it's a decision you won't regret. With that, I just want to thank you for clicking on this video. It means a great deal to me. And if I'm lucky, I'll see you back here for another video real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.